Hello and welcome to the 17th episode of the Slow Ride Podcast. My name is Tim Hayes. You can find me on Twitter at the Super Rookie. Joined in Boston, Massachusetts, by Spencer Howe. That's at Spencer Howe, H A U G H. And in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the little guy Matt Allen at the little guy Matt. So, gentlemen, the yep. Tour de France is almost. We're, we're second Sunday. We have one more stage tomorrow before we reach our rest day. Um, lots of excitement going on there. The big news, of course, is Chris Froome is no longer in the race, which is good news for us because we all subscribe to the Don't Choose Chris <laughs> Froome for your Velo Games Fantasy yeah. League, which we'll get to in a moment. But the big news is how mad do you think Sky is that they didn't bring Wiggins? I think they're okay with it. I think they're over Wiggins. I think he broke their heart. And they're just they're all port crazy. I think. So you, I think they so, actually are in love with port. So they're all about the little glasses of wine, or into Richie Port. They're into Richie Port. Probably not the little glasses of wine. I don't even think they have any port riders from Portugal on their team. Isn't Richie Port? Where's he from? He's from Tasmania. He's Australian. He's he's a Tassie. I don't know what they're actually called. I don't know. Are Tasmanians <laughs> Australian? Or are they just part of the Commonwealth? We don't want to offend our Tasmanian listener. Probably um, right right I'm now. I'm pretty sure they're the Australian. The but really? We're, I didn't know. We're getting an Australia. angry email right now. Yeah, I bet it's one of those. It's like it's like if you said like, oh, people from Minnesota are basically people from Wisconsin. No. I mean they are. No, they're not. So so, Spencer, do you think it's a big deal that Wiggins isn't around? I think it is a big deal. Uh, I think it was a, a serious mistake. I think, you know, you always want to stack your team with the top talent that you have on staff. At the same time, I don't think Sky regrets it at all. I think they made the decision they want to make. I think they're going to stick by it, and they're not going to have any regrets about it. So, but, you know, I'm an armchair quarterback, so, you know, I get to I get to say whatever I want, and... You know, they don't. They're never going to go, oh, yeah, we screwed that up, you know? Yeah. Well, it they seems can't. like Port's, Port's definitely got a chance to get on the podium at the minimum, so it's oh, really he's, in the he's long been run. a great racer for a yeah. long time, yeah. he's He's got the goods. So, well, yeah, so Chris Froome's out. Obviously, he uh, dropped out on Stage 5. Seems like the crash on Stage 4 really messed up his arm, that he started the stage with a broken wrist is what they're saying. Yeah. Um, but stage five was a story all in of itself. It was probably the best stage I've ever seen ever in watching the tour. The only thing that's close as far as excitement to me was when Armstrong crashed with the Musette bag. Um, that this is your was your favorite moment of all time. Well, that was a really exciting moment. Like it was exciting. You know, you're like, oh, man, what's going to happen? Then, of course, he went all like Lance and had to win and made it ridiculous. But <laughs> Rude in the moment. <laughs> I, especially when Mayo was the you know, one. No, that... no, I think there's a better Lance tour moment than that. That was when, more exciting. When he was downhill? I, th- I think it was, I think with... it was when Beloki crashed, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was pretty yeah, that was good, pretty too. Good. And, then, uh, and then my Phil, Phil Sherwin or Paul Liggett uh, was sitting there the whole time. <laughs> uh, I get them mixed up because they're both horrible. Um, was the one that, uh, you know, he's a cyclocross racer. And you're oh, like, yeah. oh, God. Because no, know... he did cross Vegas once. Actually, can we talk about cyclocross um, sure. In relation to the Tour de France, because well, at, like Boom won Stage Five, right? And yeah. all they did the whole time in the live coverage that I saw was talk about how he was made for the cobbles because he's a cyclocross racer, and how he had yeah. the skills to handle it because he's a cyclocross racer. And it's true. Um, it just kind of drives me crazy because what about cobblestones and cyclocross go together? Like, there's that one race. They're, with they're completely though. different. Well, I mean, but if we're going to talk about cross, there's Just also Matteo Matteo Trenton won the the sprint over Sagan, and he's done some cyclocross. Mm-hmm. So, right. but Sagan, Sagan so, is so what, is like Tom former Boone. junior so is... podium finisher. But but what? I think the importance here is that uh, yes, they need to find they need just new new announcers. Those announcers are horrible, and they're not picking on. I think if you go hands down, if you listen to the Eurosport feed, and you you hear you get to hear Sean Kelly say third place all the time. And then you listen to uh, NBC Sports. It's easy which one I'm going to listen to every single time, especially the way that the, uh, the the sprints are called. But let's get back to those cobbles. I do want to yeah. talk about this because of the whining 
of the racers like oh this doesn't belong in the tour and it's and you wanted your excitement i mean andrew talansky go back to montana with that type of complaining i was very I disappointed. from miami not talansky i'm sorry i'm thinking of van garderen talansky you're cool because you're from florida i'm all in your corner and you're on my fantasy team van garderen i'm very disappointed i appreciate yeah. your apology but that that interview he gave when he was on his trainer Oh my gosh! I wanted to pull out the small violin and start playing. Did you guys see that? I don't. I did, and I. I thought you know I don't agree with him, but I. I don't appreciate his apology because obviously the second he said ASO, his 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 team press person just freaked out that he badmouthed the ASO. So and it's kind of kind of wimpy and poor form to like retract that. I mean, obviously he that's how he felt. If he doesn't like, he doesn't like it. But I mean, he's wrong. He should he should just toughen up and what? do it. I just didn't like well, the, the way just, he blamed I... the other people was what got me though. Like he blamed the the, the watchers, like oh you guys wanted your drama, there yeah, you had yeah, it, yeah. and it's like oh sorry TJ. Yeah, I, I think it's know. weird that everybody acts like they haven't had the tour route announced for almost an entire year. Yeah, by the time we get to stage five, and like they're they're shocked that there's going to be, you know, cobblestones in there. Yeah. It's like, man, if it's not for you, if you don't like it, if you're a Grand Tour guy that, that can't handle that, man, race the Giro or race the Vuelta, you know? Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, it changes every year. It probably won't be in there next year. The Giro goes up those weird dirt road climbs at the end, or they go up, you know, ski slopes where there's still snow on the side of the road. Yeah. I just, the. Yeah. That, it's always that, something. That complaining about the cobbles, and I tell you. What Nibali did, and Lars Boom with the win, but what Nibali did to get um, third place uh, beside behind uh, Fulsang was impressive. Like, yeah, if he was. wins, I'm going to give him nothing but props because he earned it on that day. And that, to me, is what the tour really is all about, that all-around racer that can do it all. Like, they threw cobbles on him. Granted, it was raining. They couldn't control that. I mean, dude, but Nibali worked his ass off and got it. Yeah. yeah. What's what's also special about that stage is you know like everybody's like oh it's like a mini Peru Bay it's short, um you know so it's not as bad as Peru Bay and there's less cobblestones but uh, when you think about it how many people actually finish Peru Bay each year you know like there's only yeah. like a group of twenty or thirty guys like all the rest do their work and drop out and go to the showers. But this is the tour and if you want to start the next day you have to finish so. To, you know, 200 guys are destroying themselves trying to finish this uh, stage, and uh, it adds a whole new element to it. And then they throw the rain in. We haven't had a rainy Roubaix since early 2000s, so it was a it was an interesting day. There was a lot of dynamic going on there. It, it was it was exciting to watch. I got to watch it at the bike shop, and you know, it was just just a ton of fun to see. Um, but Nibali, tons of props, and oh, uh, yeah. Spencer, um, and little guy. I, I'm not logged in on your team, but Spencer, you have Nibali on your team. I have Nibali. And you both had Nibali, which I made the mistake and didn't get. And as we look into the fantasy Tour de France on Velo Games. Um, yeah, how's that going? Uh, you know, let's take a break. We'll come right back and we'll talk about it. I don't care where you're from. The first time that I saw you, girl, you had me sprung. Just the way that my name rolls off your tongue. Damn near knock all the wind out my lungs. Baby girl, you the one, you the maximum. You got every man begging for scraps and crumbs. I can't find. I want it all in one lump sum. But girl, you got me sitting on my hands and thumbs. I ain't done. Girl, you got the magic touch. You seen every man out there and passed him off except one. Baby girl, that's what's up. I can't wait for the day when we hang and tough. I said, I'm not back and this is sadness for me is that we have to talk about the velo games um dot com slow ride podcast super fantasy league tour de france i had the lead for the first eight stages and then comes stage nine spencer and his squad the fignon aerodynamics takes first place among the three of us and he has roughly 
a 150 point lead on me and little guy i'm scrolling down is there you are um you're down there in 22nd place yes <clears throat> so yeah i'm coming i'm coming up um Don't worry. i do want to give a shout out to dot and dots boys and also paul messel and the quick release both these two individuals have squads that are ranking near the top you, you know what's special um, about dots team is what? uh it had cavendish on it so they're running a man short and still winning our league Impressive. Well, but that they is also impressive. Have, they have Nicholas Roach, and I have a. But if you look, well, they've they've got <laughs> so, Nabali, which is nice, and they got full thing. Just, but like, then they've got Roach, thing. who's hasn't scored any points, so he's like Cavendish. Yeah. And they have Tony Martin, who won the stage race. I I don't think Dot's gonna be around that much longer. The quick release, however, on the other hand, this is Paul Messels. He's got Contador, Nabali, he's got Kittle, and Sagan are his big big winners. Well, the um, the the sprinters are done. Like, uh, there's not going to be a whole lot there's of that left. Stages. We're moving into, like, the real points section of the game here. Now, we do have uh, I do a couple shout-outs to the top tens for Brian Girding. He got last place in the Giro competition, and here he is in 10th uh, place with a, with a good team. Uh, my favorite team name, I, I really went through these to look to see, is Summer's Eve Racing presented by Viagra. There's just something about that that just uh, re- really brings it all together. And of course, um, in last place, we have Almageddon of Chris Alm. Now, lots of uh, good good news for me. Um, better news for you guys is that Spencer, you have Contador and Nibali. Um, little guy, you have just Nibali. So I think that you guys are definitely going to get some more points than me in the long run. But I'm Don't holding out. Do you have Galvin? He does, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I got I'm Galvin. Out... I don't, I don't have my thing lot open right now, but, but I, I have, I believe I'm in the yellow jersey after I was just in the yellow jersey. <laughs> well, I, I do want to say that transfer it from riders within the team. It's I've done a... really well. My my hidden gem that I picked that you guys did not is I, I do have Kiewitkowski of Omega Pharma Quickstep currently in the white jersey. I think he's mm. riding really strong, and there's always that competition of can he be a Grand Tour winner? And right now he's showing that he belongs there. Never heard of him. Yeah, Never. is he a rider, or is he like on one of the, just one of the support staff? So, <laughs> if we're looking at Velo Games, I'm definitely uh, trending down. Spencer's trending up, and little guy, you're way down. So, um, there, there we have it. Uh, the Slow Ride <laughs> Podcast. Wait till tomorrow, my friend. <laughs> so tomorrow's stage, stage ten, um, has lots of up and downs, and then we have the. The weird, the rest day on Tuesday. Now, normally we have rest days on Monday, right? Yeah, I like this because I have, I, have, I don't have anything to do tomorrow, and uh, so I can watch the stage. Sometimes, a... a lot of day, times I have Mondays off, and then it's a rest day, and that really brings me down. But they worked out their schedule this year finally. I've been sending some emails to the tour, but they finally got it together for me. So, how long does Gallopin keep this jersey? You think? Um, I think he'll fight and keep it tomorrow. Keep it through the rest day at least. Bastille day. It's, it's Bastille Day. He's got to keep it. A Frenchman in Jersey can't lose it. He's gonna, he's gonna really dig deep. It's gonna be beautiful. So is that why the uh, rest day is on Tuesday this year? Because uh, Bastille Day uh, probably on Monday. Probably, yeah. yeah, I would think okay. so. They they gotta have a stage on Bastille Day. And now with a Frenchman in it, obviously it was well worth <laughs> pushing the rest day back a day. So um, if we do scroll down to last place, I do want to point out that Ted King. Is a hundred is one hour and fifty minutes behind. Yeah. Um. He is right next to uh, Cheng Ji, which is the first ever Chinese rider for Team Giant Shimano. Um. He has a seven second advantage. So USA bringing up the rear. Um. Good luck to Ted King. I do hope that you have better luck than you have been experiencing in your Tour de France career. One of these conversations that's been coming up and up, um, on uh. Uh, the Tour de France this year besides the cobbles is in Britain with the amazing crowds were these Tour de France selfies did you guys see these things where people were taking selfies on the side of the road yes yeah now, little, a few of those now little guy I know that you can't take a selfie with your flip phone but I don't have a flip phone you know you guys I've never actually owned a flip phone did really? you know that I had like a brick and then I had a smartphone what, how do you guys feel about the selfies because Obviously, I'm a little bit biased. Like to me, the selfie in the middle of the race is pretty awesome because when I got Chris Horner's autograph during the middle of the race, you know, like I can't be the one person that's like, "Ooh, they're stupid. They're real dangerous and a real shame." Because I'd be the idiot that's getting the selfie during the race. However, yeah, I like to be. think that I wouldn't would stick be. my head out into the middle of the course like I some of these people would. are doing. Do you, <laughs> you think they would knock right. the phone out of my you, hands? You gotta find the rider who's. I the think there's a pretty good chance. Down. And, yeah, uh, and I you know, think if you were up, 
on a mountaintop. Coach Tim would be out. We've had a couple beers. You'd be telling everybody how it is and what you know, and I'm going to show these riders what's up. Yeah, you TJ would probably lose it on you and beat you up. That's well, no. It, uh, well, I just run on some cobbled streets, or I'd be like, ooh, I'm on a sidewalk, and there's some cracks in the road. Come get me, TJ, and then, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's possible. You know, the tour of selfies was definitely a big, big deal. Um, but, you know, I think the, the riders brought it upon themselves with all the selfies they were taking at the team presentation. So that- well, the tour, yeah, the tour created that hashtag, and now they're mad. Like, whatever. Well, we'll be right back a little bit about spoilers on Facebook and listener email. Every time that I get up on the night, I got to dedicate a time to you, girl, come on. Hey, 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 come on. So, guys, one you know it's Tour de France time when our Facebook pages light up with people saying things like, don't spoil what happened at the tour because I didn't have a chance to watch it. Like, don't list who won mm-hmm. or I'm going to unfriend you. I, I was getting threats from Somebody's my Facebook unfriend friends. You? I, I think know. they're just looking for a reason to unfriend you. <laughs> that's that's what I was kind of thinking. Um, yeah, that's but just... it, I started laughing. I was like, you know this is the most ridiculous thing ever. Can these people not live without Facebook for a little yeah. while? Or, you know, do they complain to the New York Times for the New York Times reporting on the Olympics before they're able to see who won the gold medal? I mean, the the whole idea, it's a 20, what, 21st century now? 22nd. Mm-hmm. Can't, 21st, can't, yeah, you're right. No, Spencer's can't, wrong. You're right. Can't, <laughs> Typical. Can't, can't you just uh, figure out a way to like you know not look at the Facebook? I don't know. Did you guys notice this? People complaining. Like on Twitter, people don't complain. Facebook... I haven't been on Facebook for a really long time. I don't oh, know okay. what's going on on there. If you're friends with me on Facebook, you'll never hear from me. You should contact <laughs> me in another way. You send me a letter. It's more likely that I'll look at it. On Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. I actually got some letters from you. The annoying other day, waste of guy. time. Yeah, 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 you did. Nice. I got those Adam. postcards. Yeah, I got like ten up? postcards all at once. Nah, it wasn't that many. The spoilers on Facebook. I'm a big fan of just you know announcing who won and just ruining people's day if they have to go on the internet to find you, out. You uh, you are pretty you know. famous for ruining pretty <laughs> much everything. This uh this does bring us to our um one of our viewer emails. You can always email us at the slow ride podcast at gmail dot com. And last week we we talked about the art of ten damning someone, right? The, the idea that you can snot all over them if you want to get them away from you while you're riding on the trails. So the the, the hanger-ons. Well, Derek uh, Lewis, our good friend who now lives in New York, uh, just wanted to share a little story. He says, you know, having left Minneapolis for the Big, big Apple, there's a lot of difference when heading out for a road bike. But significant to this topic is that there are 10 times more cyclists out on the road, and most of them are fairly new to the sport. And so he continues... Being new to the sport, there will be a ton of etiquette missing that you can only learn the hard way. So one issue that happens a lot is that a new cyclist will pride themselves with the goal of hanging on your wheel. It's usually just for a few of my buddies out on a social ride and someone has just latched on. It's a badge of honor not to be dropped, I guess. But as Spencer points out, it's just wrong. So here's my analogy that I think Spencer will agree on. If three buddies are out one night at the bar and have a booth just catching up, telling stories, and having a drink. A stranger who is alone walks up and sits down in your booth. I guess technically you're at a bar, so it should be social, but you're catching up with your friends. But worse, this stranger doesn't actually ask you if he can sit at their table. He just drinks his beer next to you. Now imagine this stranger who is alone asks nicely if he can sit at your table in the open seat. I guess if you and your friends are in the mood to see meet someone new, you can take pity on them and being alone and offer him a seat however most often you don't get enough time with your good friends and you just want to chat them up and tell them about your job wife kids or whatever and hear their story so there you go don't sit in the booth with someone so you don't ride with them on the group ride you tend damn them it's just I, I, not all I, over them i do okay. agree with the analogy it's it's a good uh, you know it puts it in perspective for people that maybe don't uh, don't think about it 
you know you're like i want to i want to ride fast and this guy's riding fast so i'll just jump on his wheel on the bike yeah. path and and yeah. uh, you know get in a good workout and you know they, yeah it makes sense uh you know in theory but uh in practice the etiquette is poor um you know always ask first if you're going to and really um you're better off finding some friends of yours that are into cycling or or hanging out around the shop you know i'm sure you guys you've got guys well, think, at swift cycle that come yeah. in asking like hey when's there a group ride that i can join and uh, you know you point them in the right direction and and then you have exactly. that uh, that social group so you if you meet them. someone new and they're just getting into riding let them know about social group rides that are more open for people but there is this uh when i was in new york city um this past week riding around central park uh it was pretty crazy uh lots of uh challenging one another going up the climbs like you'd see someone and then someone would just start racing with you nice. it was pretty crazy because you know there's not many places to ride but there's lots of pathlete warriors out there that are really trying to 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 beat you you gotta get those koms bro did you win did you win you know i think i have a strava on the central park loop where i have nice. like you know your time is you know 890th out of 10,315 oh. people that have done this loop. You know, this is <laughs> this will segue nicely into uh, our, our, um, rehashing our out-of-town form conversation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because uh, Timmy came up to visit me here in Boston uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, I'm just going to say, you know, he, he was riding pretty well for, for out-of-town form. Okay. But uh, you could tell there was no hills in Florida because yeah. uh, he, was, he was struggling. There was some... There was some struggle. I could see it so, in, in the eyes when I gave him the look, the Ulrich Lance look. Just because of hills? Because you don't know what hills are down there anymore? Uh, you know, there's there's only so many overpasses. But yeah. I do want to say that, you know, the out-of-town form is something we've always talked about. It The first experience with the out-of-town form was when I lived in Chicago in 2006. And I came back to Minneapolis. I was like faster than ever. I was actually a decent Cat 3. And then it all went downhill, right? Well, yeah, as soon as you came back, your, yeah. your out-of-town form went away. Because the mm-hmm. idea is that, that you don't really know people, so you only know people through riding a bike. So therefore, you're going to ride your bike more often to hang out with people. So I had good friends in Chicago that I got to ride with, like Roller Derby, our friend Luke, that runs that great site, Rest in Peace. And so as we we sat there, we, we were getting better, and then I moved back to Minneapolis, and I just went to the bar all the time. Well, now fast forward to uh, this trip to go see Spencer, who were both on out-of-town form. Um, and Spencer's like, Oh well, let's go ride some hills. And yeah, it was it was painful. There was a couple of hills that just kept going yeah. and going. Uh, kept going. Tim, yeah, a couple of Timmy, <laughs> Timmy did get me in in a sprint. Uh, you know, out in Concord by uh, Dude, Walden Pond. But I won the Walden Pond sprint, and then I Good sat job. and pondered Good about job. it. But every time we turned a corner and there was another hill, I could hear an audible groan <laughs> uh-huh. coming well, from Timmy. the guys at so. the shop were making fun of me because I put a 25 tooth on my cog in the back, you know, and I was like, come on, guys. And they're like, oh, you should run a straight block. What are you? Do you want me to put your compact cranks on too? <laughs> you you could have used them. Uh, we'll be right back with our best of the week. So lots of other things happening in the world of cycling or, you know, lots of things. And one of the, the, the favorite categories of our listeners is we talk about the best of the week. I, I do want to point out, and it's not out of uh, pain or anything, that the Giro Rosa ended um, today with uh, Marianne Voss winning the pink jersey. The Giro Rosa is pretty much the ladies' Giro de uh, Giro d'Italia. It was the 25th year of it. It was nine stages long, 135 riders finished, and it was Marianne Voss in pink. And Marianne Voss is also your cyclocross world champion. She's been dabbling in mountain biking. Probably one of the best, if not the best, cyclist of all time. Yeah, she's up there for sure. She's pretty amazing. <laughs> pretty amazing. I got to meet yeah. her at the phone party last year. It was pretty great. Nice. Really yeah, amazing. it's it's it looks like a great race. Um, 
the little recaps I could find uh, made it look really exciting, and uh, the racing seemed good. It's it's a bummer that they have to run it during the Tour de France because I, I feel like it it really gets buried. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's a you know reasoning for that. There must be a reasoning for it, but uh, hopefully they can maybe work that out in the future. Well, I'm really hopeful that you know with maybe more press going to the Giro uh, Rosa or the 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 women's Giro d'Italia and then this addition of the one day race and the um Champ de Lise of the tour for the ladies that maybe we'll start seeing a uh, a full stage race for the women in France and I don't really understand why they couldn't run it concurrently you know even if they're more afraid of like the length of the stages couldn't they start the women at like the halfway point of each stage Maybe. That's assuming that the ladies couldn't even do the full distance, which we know they can. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's just something to think about. Yeah. So, uh, little guy, what, what do you have for us? I guess I kind of got two now that you mentioned it. Um, one, the Tour of Austria looks pretty cool. It's too bad I don't have time to watch that because I'm watching the tour. And Is that, that happening uh, right now, Tour it of just, Austria? It just finished, yeah. And uh, But uh, Nero Quintana's little brother dare i think his first name is he won a stage which just proves a mountain stage so that we should all be afraid that quintanas are going to just dominate anything that goes uphill <laughs> for the next like 10 years because now there's not just you know narrow but there's another a younger one coming up so what is like um, the leader of that race of the tour of austria get like leader like what do they wear lederhosen or something like what's I think their they wear a yellow jersey i think the picture uh, I said is peter oh, okay. uh Kenna, Kenna, I don't know how to pronounce his name, of uh, Sky, who just won, which is kind of funny. Sky's having all these problems and not getting any press. They just want to stay dressed. So. Sure, Australia. Um, What's your other one you got? My other thing that I really liked is I watched the stage where Greipel won, which I didn't really like because it was a sprint stage and the sprinting stupid. But what I liked is right after the stage, he's looking around for all his teammates to hug, which is my favorite part of the stage. They're all so happy. They're all just looking for hugs. And he sees Jürgen <laughs> Vandenbroek, who's like off camera, and he for a second he looks frightened, like something happened to Jürgen Vandenbroek, and he goes, "Are you okay?" And then Jürgen says, "Yes." And then they hug, and it's all happiness again. And I, that was my favorite moment. The like, <laughs> he's so happy he won, it. and then he had this look of like, "Oh no, did our GC guy like hurt himself? Something happened?" And then he's like, "No, it's okay. Everything's great. I want to so, stage. GC man's happy. Beautiful." I do it with Love. uh with couple of things on Greipel is that every time he smiles, I expect gold teeth like the Bond villain Jaws. And second is that up until the point of Greipel winning, you know, there hadn't been like every stage won by Kittle. Yeah. Kittle wasn't in the arrow helmet and then everyone else was in the arrow helmet that he was beating. And it was bad like, that it ruined your arrow film. I know it really ruined it. And yeah. I, you know, at least the, the the laser helmet that they've got has the arrow cover and they've it says arrow shell so it's very like blatant what it is like they're using the top as advertising I, I don't think enough of the other helmet companies that are making this arrow garbage um, oh, really yeah. really yeah. take full advantage of the advertising on the can top I, can I add another thing then? I have another another best of the week is somewhere I don't even remember where I have to find it. I found a picture of Sagan, and he's totally got like eyes airbrushed into his yeah, helmet, yeah. like Sagan I, eyes. It's I beautiful. put that on the I put yeah. that on the Twitter. It was oh crazy. My God. I couldn't good. believe it because he had his head down. That was great. That was good. So yeah, yeah he's a... he's bringing in some of that uh, Valentino Rossi from uh, MotoGP <laughs> style. You know, I, we need awesome. more airbrushing in cycling. It's, oh, it's way more. You way know, more. like the early you know 2000 era when everybody is doing kind of goofy stuff. That was a great time, and, and it's well, just kind of fallen by the wayside. Not just airbrushing, but why don't these teams have, like, the satin jackets, like the starter jackets, and then on the back it can say sky, but it's, like, embroidered on there. And what's you crazy, want I wanted to jacket? buy, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to buy, like, starter jackets for the Swift Cycle team here in Gainesville, like, where we could all rock around, like, you know, a black coat with the, like, maybe a unicorn patch, like, once guys learn earn their uh, colors on the back, and, uh... But the problem was no one makes satin jackets that you can really embroider, like nicely. Like you can't well, get like a star. You can't get a starter gotta, jacket. Anymore. You gotta go down and hang out at the VFW and wait for the salesman <laughs> yeah, to come man. in. I'm sure there's like a local sports association that's already it's all on that shit. There's some local place that does it. Right, yeah. right, you gotta well, look well, local. Well. It's out there. So, so Spencer, since you're our resident fashion expert, mm. um, today, uh, Blay Kadri of AG2R rocked the full polka dots on the bibs and the jersey and mm -hmm. he also had dots on the bike how do you feel about the full polka dot kit 
<laughs> you know, I'm a fan of just the jersey. Um, okay. But if you're going to do the jersey and the bibs, I love it when they do the helmet and the bike and shoe <laughs> covers and the gloves and like if you're gonna do it man go all the way like go all the no halfway like <laughs> otherwise just wear the jersey because uh you know you're gonna lose it the next day anyway you know that so i was uh i was happy about the bike it's 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 kind of fun you know when the team's like because you know they've got that sitting in the trailer and they're looking at it and they're like God, I hope we get to use this, you know, <laughs> like, I hope, I hope we didn't have this painted up for no reason. And, uh, you know, so it makes me happy that they, they brought the frame, they thought they planned ahead, and then they actually got to use it. So, you know, they're excited. I want to see some polka dot bar tape. I want to see, I want to see somebody paint their fingernails with polka dots on them, you know, <laughs> like, go all the way, man, just got just do it. It's your time to shine. It's your 15 minutes. So, uh, if you had to choose today, who's going to win the, the tour? Uh, Spencer, go. Uh, I think Contador is still going to win the tour. Okay. Sp- uh, little guy? Nibali. Nibali? Oh, see, I think you're both wrong. I think it's going to be Jacob Fulsgang of uh, Astana. Better because... work on his name. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to <laughs> yeah, figure say that one F- out. Fugl sang? I don't actually know, but I don't so think I th- it's what you said. <laughs> the, the reason I think it's going to be Fool's Gang. Uh, and we get lots of uh, lots of hate on Twitter about tour tour uh, name pro- pronunciations, but um, I, the reason I think it's going to be him is that Contador is going to be uh, marking Nabali so much yeah. that uh, Foles Gang is going to be able to attack with like Richie Port and go up the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's so a good pick. So he's so here's higher. a question then, uh, Tim, yeah. Port or Pino? Well, Port because I like to have it after my steak. Ah. Little guy, Porter Pino. Uh, I'm gonna go with Pino. I'm not a big fan of Port. All right. But why don't you like Port? It's just a little bit more expensive and. Uh no, he's on Team Sky. He sucks. Everything <laughs> on Team Sky sucks. <laughs> really? Like everything sucks? Like you, you're not a fan of Wiggins? No, I'm not a fan of Wiggins. He's it's bearded jerk. Wiggins. He's. Dude, it, who cares what? if he has a beard? He's still an because uncommunity he's... jerk. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's he's a jerk. He you know there. he's a jerk. Everybody That's knows he's Wiggins. a jerk. Bearded Wiggins like... is a totally chill dude who's like Bearded Wiggins is a chill dude. Maybe him or Froome should, you know, become a man and call each other. So who's going to be the uh, who's so... gonna be the top, top placed American? Does anybody? I don't care. I hope all the Americans drop out because I'm so sick of the like, English <laughs> English rider panic that they have I, every time that non English rider does. You something. don't think Horner's gonna win? Oh my god, the, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I just watched the a, uh, a stage recap or something on the NBC uh, app, and and they were they spent like four minutes talking about TJ Van Garderen and what he was gonna do, and they had his name up across the bottom, you know, and it was like currently 13th place, and I was like, that was the only guy they talked about. And I was just like, you know, there's a guy like winning and there's a guy in second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth and all the way down to 13th that are, I don't know. It so, was, yeah. it, it's annoying. It is annoying. Yeah. I mean, so I little... get it. Like that's the market, but like, I don't well, know, man, like American fans, either they need to wisen up and just get with the program and learn who these guys who aren't Americans are, or the network needs to realize that the people watching the Tour de France actually do know who these other that's, guys are see, and see, there's we that. don't actually deal. care about that's 13th the deal. place. They need to know that, that people want, like if people that are investing their time in the tour, I don't think they really care too much about the Americans, but I want to piggyback on what little guy said. Rather than all of them dropping out, I want all of them to drop out except Ted King and then Ted King becomes the top placed American, but he finishes in last. I think top place American will be uh, Talansky at the end of the day. No, I... absolutely. Not. I'm going to interrupt you and say no. Yeah. That dude has how many times has he crashed? Like dude, 85 he's from Miami, times. Man. He's from Miami. He's uh, got this. He no, he's gonna he needs to learn more. how to ride a bike before he can win a tour or even finish in the top ten. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say on that. Sorry. There we have it. That's our 17th episode of the Slow Ride Podcast. You can find us at theslowridepodcast.com. We're also on Facebook. Search for Slowride. But most importantly, subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher. 
Just search Slow Ride Podcast. Tell your friends. Leave a review for us. We had 388 listens last episode, which is which is amazing. So thanks to every all three of you that listened to us almost 100 times each. That, that was beautiful. great. So that's the three of us plus my mom. And uh, there we have it. Um, so thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week with another edition of the Slow Ride Podcast. Every time that I get up on the microphone, I got to dedicate a round to your girl. Come on. Come on. Girl, you look so good. Want to drop it on home like a nail through the wood. Uh. Girl, you look so nice. Every time you walk by, make a man look twice. Uh. Girl, you look so fine. Want to say so much. Can you make a little time? Uh. Girl, you look so cute. Women